What up, what up, Wimbush here. And today I'm excited to show you guys not only how we can make 360 skybox using Blockade AI, but how we can also take the same skyboxes in the applications like Unreal Engine, Cinema 4D, and even After Effects using some forgotten tools. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. So we're going to get started using this application called Blockade Labs. This is browser based. So you go to blockadelabs.com. We'll leave a link down below so you guys can follow along as well. But what you want to do once you come here, you can actually click and drag this around. So these are what we're going to be building. These are called skyboxes and they're basically 360 degree worlds that you could build with AI. Now let's click on conjure your world. And the first thing you'll see is there's some updates that came up in which I'm going to show you right now how we could use. So we're just going to confirm this. And then same thing right here, it's gonna tell you a couple of things like how you could use this. It's constantly being updated. So you'll see these tabs come up with the latest and greatest updates. But once you're in here, you will actually be able to see we have this default skybox in here. And the first thing we're gonna do is actually come down to here to where it says create new. And it's gonna bring up another prompt right here in which I'm just gonna click get started. And this is actually gonna bring up a grid now. Now this is actually pretty new. So before you would just type in your prompt and it would create the skybox for you. But now we can actually draw a couple of things in here and actually have it build off our drawings. And so with shortcut B on my keyboard, I'm gonna press that. And you can see right here on the right hand side, it actually brought up the brush. So the shortcut is just to quickly go through them. B is for brush. And then if I come up here, this is gonna be for pan. So H is for pan, or you can hold down a space bar to pan. And then this is the eraser right here, which will be E. So with my paintbrush selected right here, I'm actually just gonna maybe do something simple, maybe like draw a door here. And I'm just gonna make like a sci-fi corridor. So something like that. And then I'm gonna hold down a space bar, just kind of scope around here, maybe make another corridor right here. And the cool thing about having these grids is it allows us to draw here and actually know exactly what we're doing. Like back in the day when I used to do 360 VR stuff inside of Photoshop, this would be like a lot of guesswork and you would just really not really know what you're doing there. But with these grid lines and everything, this is actually a huge help because now we can actually see where we're drawing it. And if you come down here in the bottom left hand corner, we have these different guides. So right now we're just on a sphere guide. If you click on this one, this will take you to more of like a cube room right here. And then if you click right here, this is actually going to show you what it looks like with a skybox behind it. So you can actually click on the sphere version as well. And then down here, this will actually give us a grid plane here at the bottom. So anybody familiar with like Cinema 4D, that's pretty much the grid that you start off with down there. But I'm just going to go back to the default and I'm just going to have this right here. So just quick and easy, I just made two squares and then went up top there and we're going to make like a sci-fi corridor. So down here where it says dream up your world. So I'm going to type in corridor, hallway, long, empty, neon light, computers, and let's just say afternoon, golden lighting, something like that. And then down here, we see where it says digital painting. We actually have a bunch of different genres we could pick. So we could do digital painting, realistic, anime style. What I'm gonna go for is maybe sci-fi. Let's see what sci-fi looks like. And if we don't like it, we can always come down here to cyberpunk. So I'm gonna click on sci-fi and then let's click generate and see what we come up with. And now you can see we have a sci-fi corridor. So we have some hallways down here. We have computers, neon lights, just like we typed here. And the cool thing is like, I think this is where my doorway is. So if I come down here, it actually starts to highlight the imagery that we drew. So let's see what it looks like behind us here. And you can make like much more complex drawings, but I just did this basically just quick and easy. But you can see how when you draw out your room, it's actually gonna use your drawing prompts to kind of imagine what you want it to be. Now we have this other option down here that's called Remix This. So if you click on this, it's gonna come up with this disclaimer here, telling you to just try some new stuff, like change out the time of day, the weather, the materials, the visual styles, just have fun with it. So I'm gonna click Get Started. And keeping what I have here, I'm just gonna actually delete everything down here in a prompt. And maybe let's just type in like steampunk in the morning, winter snow, and let's remix this and let's see what happens here. I mean, it's kind of giving us the same, you know, I typed in steampunk. You could definitely see like the winter influence that's out here, 
but you could definitely take a lot of time just going in here and fine tuning your prompts. But for tutorial sake, let's just say we're happy with these results and we want to bring these into other applications. Now, the first application I'm going to showcase how we can use the skyboxes in is Unreal Engine 5, in which if you guys don't already know, I do have a brand new course that just came out with School of Motion, getting everybody acclimated with Unreal Engine 5. It's geared towards 3D motion graphic artists like myself. And so if this is something that interests you, make sure you go check that out today. But moving on back into to the tutorial down here we have unreal engine 5 opened up and i have a completely blank scene in here now the first thing i'm going to show you guys is how we could bring it in using the hdr backdrop so if i come up here to this cube i'm going to come down here to where we have lights and down here at the bottom it says hdr backdrop so i'm going to click on this and now you can see it's populating our scene here we have an hdr that's already connected to it and if i scroll up here and just scroll around you can see we have this HDR. It's a little bit stretched. So if I clicked on this diamond here, pull this up, that's just going to fix it. But right off the bat, you can see we have an HDR dumb inside of our scene. So if I double click on it, we can kind of pull back a little bit and you can see exactly what's going on here. And let's say we want to use our skybox that we just downloaded from the website and we want to bring it into here. Now, first thing I'm going to do before anything else, I'm just going to zero out my coordinates. So when my HDR selected, come down here to location. I'm going to click on this just to zero everything out under my transform here. And now everything's in exact zero. So I'm going to come down here to my content drawer. I'm actually going to dock it here just so it's always here. And let's bring in the skybox that we just made. So I'm just going to drag over a Windows Explorer folder here. And I actually downloaded two versions because I downloaded the version that I made the first time and then the Steampunk one the second time. So let's just randomly select one of these, drag it in here into the content browser. Now, in theory, you should be able to just drag and drop it right here where it says cube map. But you'll notice whenever I do it, it's actually turning red right here. And that's because for Unreal Engine to be able to recognize this, it wants to see it as a .HDR, in which right now it's at a JPEG. Now, this is really easy to convert over. I'm just going to go into Photoshop and show you guys exactly what we need to do to make this an HDR. So right now I'm inside of Photoshop, the latest version. I'm just going to come up here and come over here to image. And I'm going to come down here to mode. And I'm going to select 32 bit. And now we have our 32 bit image here. And I'm going to come over here to file, come down here to save as, and then let me make this a little bit smaller so we can see it better up here in the center. But if I look down here where it says save as type, you can actually see it's going to make it a radiance and it has a dot HDR extension here. So all we have to do is save it out. And it's as easy as that. So I'm going to go back in the Unreal Engine now. And you can see right here, we actually have an HDR file here instead of our file explorer. So let me come back to Unreal. I'm actually going to delete the JPEG because we don't need that anymore. And then coming back here to File Explorer, I'm just going to left click, drag it into my content browser. And now I should be able to take this, drag it into that cube map here with my HDR selected. And now it swapped it out. So let me close out the content browser so we can see a little bit better what's going on. So I'm just going to push in here a little bit, holding down the right click and the W on my keyboard just to navigate in here. And you can see we have the HDR in here, but it's a little bit stretched out here, right? So what you would do is just click on the diamond that you have here, which it already looks like it's selected. You can actually just pull it up. You can start to actually de-stretch it that way. And then you just kind of eyeball it until you get where you want but then you should be good. So now we have our HDR inside of Unreal. Now for this next example, I'm gonna show you guys how we could use it inside of Cinema 4D using Redshift. Now I have the latest version of Cinema 4D opened up right here. You can see I already have the scene set up with a sphere and it already has a shiny reflective material on here. So the next step I'm gonna do is actually make sure I'm set up for Redshift in which my render is set up for Redshift here. That's important because what we're gonna do is come over here, the Redshift tag up here, Come down here and let's look for lights. Come down here to dumb light. And down here where we have our attributes window, you can see that we have this little attribute here for texture. Now bring it back up my Windows Explorer. I'm going to take the HDR file, just click and drag it into the texture slot right here. And now you can see that it's actually inside of our viewport here. So if I just navigate around, you can actually see it in all its glory and you can actually see it reflecting off the sphere here as well. Now, if I come over here, the redshift, and let's look through the redshift viewer real quick. So I'm going to select this and I'm going to come through, just click play, click on buckets here. So right now, instead of our render viewer, you can see we have everything rendered out, but let's say you wanted to actually render this out here and actually have an alpha channel. Cause right now you can actually see the environment inside of our render. So it's really easy. If you come down here, the background, turn this off. And now you have your alpha channel within your render. So if I click on alpha channel right here, 
Now you can see we actually have our alpha channel in there. Now for this last example, I wanna show you guys how we can actually use this inside of After Effects using the immersive tools. Now these are tools that have been long forgotten, I feel like by a lot of creators, but they do hold a special place in my heart because back in the day before Adobe actually acquired the immersive tools, I used to beta test for this company called Metal that originally created these tools that allowed us to do 360 VR stuff inside of After Effects. So it's cool that it's still there, but let me show you how we can actually use them. Now inside of After Effects, let let me actually make a comp here and I'm just going to make this one 1920 by 1080 nothing crazy so now I have my composition here and I'm just going to take the JPEG and actually click and drag it down here into my timeline but over here on the right hand side where we have effects and presets I'm going to left click on this let me actually drag this out a little bit so we can see it better but if I scroll down here to the eyes, you can see that we have immersive video, in which I feel like a lot of artists don't even know that these are even here. But if you wanted to make this so we can actually navigate around it, what you would do is come down here to rotate sphere, left click, drag it into my fixed panel. And now this actually makes it so you can rotate on the X axis. You can pan on the Y and you can roll it on the Z, which is really cool here. Now let's say that you actually wanted to add like a 2D asset to it. Like if you just threw in some text or something like that, so I'm just gonna make text, just say hi. If you actually control this around, your text is just always gonna be there. But there are some hidden tools in here that we could use to actually make this text a part of the 360 scene here. So what I'm gonna do is actually delete this composition like so. And then I'm gonna take my JPEG, bring it down here and just drag it down here to this box and make a new composition. So now we have this really long composition here, but the reason I did this is because if I come up here to window, come down here to the bottom, you can see VR comp editor .jsx. Now, if I left click on this, this is gonna bring up our VR comp editor, which is hidden away. A lot of people don't know about this, but what I could do is actually just add to the edit. And then right here where it says comp with, I'm actually just going to make it 6144, because that's what our original JPEG is right there. Keep the aspect ratio 16 by nine, but then I'm gonna add a null for the camera and I'm gonna center the camera. And then I clicked add to the edit. So now I'm just gonna actually drag this off to the side here because you can see we actually have our window here. And if I look at this null, hit the R button, we can actually control the camera in here. So I'm just gonna rotate it a little bit like so. Zero back out, come down here to Y, move this over to the side here a little bit. And you can see that it's rotating. Actually, let me make this half resolution because this is really large here. But you can see now we have this null, which is controlling our camera. And if I actually look at it in two viewports, like let me come over here where it says one view, click on two views. You can see right here what's going on with the camera. So I can actually zero it out and you can see how we're actually rotating it and we're rotating it around our scene. So I think you guys could probably see where I'm getting at now. I'm going to click on zero here. I'm going to right click down here, click on new, add some text, and that's going to type in what up, something like that. And then I'm going to make it a 3D layer here. Actually, I'm going to line it up with the camera. And let me pull it back here a little bit. There we go. So now we see what up in there. And let me actually go back to my viewport, my camera view here. And now if I rotate the camera, now you can see it's actually a part of this scene. These are the tools that will allow you to use your skyboxes that you make inside of After Effects. Now I just showed you guys how you can make your own 360 panorama skyboxes with Blockade AI, which is really cool. I would definitely say experiment with it because it is free to use at this moment. And so you can make a lot of really cool stuff and also add them into your favorite applications, just like I demonstrated here. Don't forget, I'm going to tell you guys again, I do have a brand new course here on School of Motion for anybody that's interested in Unreal Engine, especially if you come with like a 3D motion graphic background like myself this will get you fully up to speed with the world of unreal engine and i've been seeing a lot of really cool stuff out there from artists that i even look up to that took my course and they're putting the renders out there and i'm truly honored that you guys are taking it and really supporting it so once again my name is jonathan wimbush you can catch my content on my youtube channel youtube.com slash jonathan wimbush and make sure you check out all the other cool awesome stuff here on school of motion and until next time stay fresh keep creating and i catch you guys in the next tutorial i'll see you soon take care Thank you.